So listen, I know that some of you, you're looking at the screen and you see the title of the message today and the song that was playing just before the service started popped into your head. Um, if I look out while I'm preaching and I see you doing this, I'll understand. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, don't worry. So easy to say. Don't worry. Be thankful. Don't worry. Be thankful. So, as we get started today, the first slide I want to put up is simply 2020. 2020. Even saying that brings thoughts of fear to many people's hearts. And even saying that makes many people begin to worry. And even saying that makes many people say, I'll be glad when it's over. 2020. For many people, it has become synonymous with worry. It has become synonymous with worry. What's next? What's next? There's so many things that have gone on this year. 2020, people begin to worry what is happening next. And so there has been plenty to worry about this year, right? Plenty to worry about this year. There's a pandemic. That's a word we would all wish we could forget, right? The pandemic. There were rumblings about this early in the year, but it was on the other side of the world. Couldn't happen here. Oh, we shut down the airports and we forbid people to travel and, and locked them in quarantine when they came in. So we won't have to deal with all of this. Wrong. By the time all that began to happen, people already were out in communities spreading the virus. The pandemic came and suddenly we began to worry about something we'd never dealt with before. We wish we could all forget a pandemic. Who wants to deal with that? Nobody. Nobody wants to deal with that, but certainly it came. But that wasn't the only thing to worry about in 2020, was it? The pandemic came, and all of a sudden, hurricane season showed up. Oh, hurricane season in the middle of a pandemic. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it in record fashion, because more hurricanes this year than have been. We all learned some Greek this year. We started learning the Greek alphabet, right? We all learned that this year. Hurricanes showed up and it continued to be more and every time we turned around. Listen, how many of you can remember a time when there were two hurricanes in the Gulf scheduled to make landfall at the same time? That happened this year. Are you kidding me? We're dealing with a pandemic and now we're looking at a two-pronged attack from two hurricanes in the Gulf at the same time? How is all this possible? As if we needed more to worry about. So we already were worrying about the pandemic. We were worrying about hurricanes. We were worrying about civil unrest. Wait. No, that, that happened a long time ago. We got past all that stuff. We don't have to deal with civil unrest anymore. Oh, really? Now suddenly in the year 2020, there's civil unrest. People are destroying things, rioting in the street, killing one another. There's civil unrest that moved not just, oh, out there, but everywhere. Civil unrest became all across our country. And suddenly we were faced with it face to face. Again, because it never actually got settled the first time civil unrest came so even more things to worry about so 2020 became synonymous with worry and the world is fretting and right now if you turn on the news they're talking about how this past week is going to make the virus explode because 
People didn't lock themselves in their homes and stay away from everyone. They continued on and had Thanksgiving traditions. They traveled. The, the airports were busier this past week than they have been all year. People flew all over the country. People traveled all over the country. People went to see their loved ones. And now all the headlines are, now here's something else to worry about. The virus is going to get even larger. So there's all these things that we are to worry about if we listen to the news. And if that weren't enough, then throw in one more thing, election fatigue. Everyone is there, right? Election fatigue. An election that had been talked about for a couple of years and then ramped up all 2020 long. But then we had the election and things will calm down, except no, no. We're still trying to figure out who won. They're still trying to figure out what is the right answer. We're still trying to figure out runoff elections and who's going to control this and who's going to control that. And most everyone in the country has election fatigue. But many people, if asked the question, are you worried about what the final outcome is going to be, many still say, yes, we're worried about it. We're worried about how this is going to turn out. So if you ever needed a year with worry, you got it. Worry seems to have come standard with this year's model. <laughs> worry is something that has been overwhelming. We all seem to be inundated with worry about all of the things. And listen, even if you weren't worried about yourself with all the things that are going on, most of us worry about our families. We worry about our children or our parents. We're worried about our brothers and sisters. We're worried about friends that we know all over the place. And we worry about all of these things that just comes across our mind. So, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to begin in verse 25. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to begin in verse 25. All right, so as you turn there, hopefully you're turning there on Facebook, you're looking it up. If you don't have a Bible with you, then you can see it, it'll be on the screen. I encourage you to look at it in your own Bible. That way you can mark it, underline it, highlight it, remind yourself about it when you go back and read through again. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Now I want to pause there for a moment. I want to pause there for a moment. So 2020 has come standard with worry about all of these things that have come on. And we look in Matthew chapter 6, and the very first thing that is said there is don't worry. The very first thing we see in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25 is don't worry. Now I want you to look at something and pay attention. One of the reasons I want you to look in your Bible is this entire passage that we're going to be looking at today is in red, meaning Jesus is speaking. This is not secondhand information. It's not somebody's interpretation. This is exactly what Jesus said. The entire passage is Jesus speaking. And the first thing he says is, don't worry. Don't worry. Wait a minute. Preacher, you know, you understand what's happened in 2020, right? Yep, I do. You understand all these things that are going on that we don't yet know how it's going to end. That's true. I know that. And all these things that are happening, how can we not worry? Well, be thankful. Be thankful to God who is in control. Don't worry. It seems easy to say, but very hard to do. How can I not worry? Well, Jesus says, do not worry because your heavenly Father will take care of you. Right? So think about this. I had three beautiful little girls sitting up here on the steps just a moment ago. And I asked them about, were they worried about whether or not there was enough groceries at home? They're not worried. 
Why are they not worried? Mom and dad, grandma, whoever takes care of that, right? Somebody else takes care of it. Not one of them ever made a grocery list and checked to see if they had enough money in the bank and went shopping, did they? They didn't have to do that. Why? Somebody took care of them. Well, yeah, but preacher, they're children. They don't have any worries. Well, here's a news flash for you today. You are children of God. You're children of God. Yes, we have to use our abilities that God gave us to take care and do things. Yes, he's not going to go grocery shopping for us, but he's going to help us be able to do that. He's going to be the one that takes care of us. But have you never run out of money, preacher? Yep, sure have. There's been many times in my life when I looked at my checkbook and there was a whole lot more month than money left. There's still two weeks to payday, and there's not much in the pantry to eat. But God provided. I could th- start today and go through many instances of my life. And, I, and trust me, <laughs> most of these instances that I could tell you about that happened in my life, I was not the strongest Christian at the time. I believed, I trusted God, but I trusted probably my checkbook more. I believed in Him as long as I could see it. But you know what happened? Suddenly there's more months left than money. There's not very many groceries in the pantry. And how am I going to make it to the end of the month? Now, just as a precursor to that, you know why there was more months left than money? Because I blew it. I thought I needed this and this and this, and they would set it up on easy payments. Right? Anybody ever heard of that? Easy payments? Did you know $25 easy payments, when you multiply that 10 times, that adds up? I didn't know that back then. (laughs) It's only $25, but I've done that nine times already. All of a sudden, I owed more than I was making. There's more month left than money. What am I going to do? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it all out, but somehow God provided. He provided food in the form of MREs. What's an MRE? Y'all know what an MRE is, right? That's that wonderful meal ready to eat that the Army gives you in a great plastic bag. It's brown, open it up. Now it's more tan, but it used to be brown. Open it up and out comes all this freeze-dried shelf life stuff that don't go bad for 20 years. Surely that came right out of the tree, right? Came right out of the ground. That's good stuff. I don't know if it came from a science experiment or what, but it's food. And you know what's an amazing thing is you open that package up and you put it in a pot and you start adding in some salt and pepper and different seasonings and whatever, pretty soon it don't taste bad. It's amazing how far MRE and a box of minute rice will go. Long way. God provided those needs when I didn't know how it was going to to transpire. How are we going to make it? I had a wife too. I got to provide for her. How am I going to make this? But God provided He gave us the food. And you know what he also gave us when he provided the food? He gave us the understanding that we don't need to make easy payments of $25 a month on that. We need to make sure that things are taken care of. If we'll trust him, we don't need all this other stuff. He'll take care of it. There's been plenty of times when we didn't think we were going to make it to the end of the month and suddenly somebody showed up and just handed us a $100 bill for no reason. Why? Because your Father knows what you need. Because your Heavenly Father will take care of you. Does that mean I'm never going to have any suffering or pain or hard times in my life? No, that's not what it means. In fact, Jesus said you will have trouble in this world. And it's those times that cause you to be more thankful for the things that you have. The blessings that God has given you. Jesus said don't worry. Because your heavenly Father will take care of you. How do we know that? How do we know that? Maybe you've never experienced that. Maybe you've never been to a place where you had to trust that God would take care of you. How do we know that He's going to take care of us? How do we know that He will take care of us? When the time comes and we have a need, how do we know? Well, move back to Matthew again. This time we're going to look at verse 26. Through 30. Verse 26 says, Well, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, 
and your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Why is it that human beings are worth more than birds? Because we are created in His image and we have a soul. We are created in His image. We're worth more than birds. In fact, the birds were created for us. And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow, and they do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory clothed himself um, in all of his glory clothed himself like one of these. Not even Solomon was able to do that. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? He will clothe you. He will feed you. He will take care of you. But preacher, how is that going to happen? How is he going to do that? I don't know. But he says, God feeds the birds and the clothes and the flowers. He clothes the flowers so he will take care of you. How will that happen? Maybe he'll send somebody with a box of MREs to feed you. Maybe he'll send somebody with some money to take care of you. Maybe he will show you how to take care of yourself. Maybe there'll be something that happens. I don't know. It's different for everybody. God does things in ways that we don't understand. Most of us have said, well, God's ways are not our ways, but do we believe that? God does things in His own way. How He does it, I don't know. I can't tell you, listen, if you run out of money before the end of the month, this is what God's going to do. I can't tell you exactly what He's going to do, but I can tell you that God is always going to take care of you. Now that doesn't mean, oh, well, God's going to take care of the food and the clothes. I'll just go spend the money on a new boat <laughs> instead. Because God's going to take care of the rest of it. No, God's going to take care of it by giving you the, the knowledge of what to do. God's going to take care of it by helping you take care of you. That doesn't mean that you go out and just do whatever because God will allow you to reap the benefits of your selfishness. God will allow you to do that. You know, when we sin, God allows us to experience the consequences of of our sin in this world. Although he forgives us of that, he still lets us experience the consequences of the things that we do. So consequences can be experienced, but will God take care of you? Yes. Will he supply your needs for life? Yes, he's going to take care of you. I don't know how. All I know is Jesus feeds the birds and he clothes the flowers, so he's going to take care of you. In other words, in order to not worry, we have to be thankful thankful well what do you mean preacher how, how is being thankful going to keep us from worrying well it's just like i said before if you stopped and paused for a moment during this thanksgiving season and began to thank god for all the blessings that he gave you and you started thinking about that you know the song says count your blessings name them one by one but if you start trying to do that there's not a single one of us that can count them all the blessings that God gives us on a daily basis are tremendous and uncountable. There's no way we can count them all. We begin to think about the blessings. Listen, it's a blessing that God opened your eyes this morning. It's a blessing that He allowed you to get out of bed and stand up on your feet. It's a blessing that He allowed you to have clothes to put on and water to take a shower and, and a toothbrush to brush your teeth. All of those things are blessings that God has given you. Every breath that you take is a blessing from God. And if we begin to be thankful for all the blessings that God has given us and we continue to stay thankful for all those things, there's no way we're going to worry because we realize how blessed we are. We begin to realize God has taken care of us even when I didn't realize it, even when I didn't know that God was the one taking care of me. Even when things happened that I, I have no idea that it was God, God did it. He took care of me. The blessings that he poured out upon me. We start looking at that and we become thankful for all the things that God did. And the more we thank him, the more we think about the blessings. And the more we think about the blessings, the less time there is to worry. In order to not worry, we need to be thankful for what God has already done. If you're sitting here today 
or if you're watching on Facebook, you have much to be thankful for. Well, how can you say that, preacher? You don't live with me. <laughs> you don't really know all about my life. You just see me on Sunday or maybe on Wednesday or maybe sometime out in the community, but you don't really know all about me. How can you say I have so much to be thankful for? Are you breathing today? If you're not breathing today and you're here, would you raise your hand? Not possible, right? You're breathing today. If you're breathing today, you have much to be thankful for. If God allowed you to get out of bed this morning, open your eyes and get out of bed, you have much to be thankful for. If you're simply breathing and, and, and have your eyes open and you're hearing what's being said today, you have much to be thankful for. Because not one of those things are guaranteed in life. Not one is guaranteed. God never promised us another second of life. Nowhere in Scripture, in all of the research that you do, God never promised us another second of life. So every moment that we have is something to be thankful for. We have much to be thankful for. If you've missed that, if you're thinking, well, you know, I, I, I don't have very much and I'm overdrawn on my checking account and the car's broke down and I'm not sure how I'm going to do Christmas, how can you say I have much to be thankful for? Well, look past those things and realize you're still breathing. God's still got you here and as long as he's got you here, there's a reason for that. And if there's a reason for that, there's something God wants to do with you. And it probably has nothing to do with your overdrawn checking account or your broken down car. It might be that those are the very things that God's going to use you in. Maybe those things that you consider to be the worst parts of your life might be the very things that you should be the most thankful for because those are the ways that God will bless you. Last week we sang the song, What if our blessings come through raindrops? What if it comes through tears? What if all those sleepless nights is what it takes to know that God is near? What if that is the way God is doing these things? We need to be thankful and understand that even in the hard times, God is near. Even in the hard times, God is with us. Even in 2020, God is here. And He's looking down and the Holy Spirit is with us and God is intervening in every one of our lives and He's blessed us beyond measure. If we simply open our eyes and see the things that he has done. During this season of Thanksgiving, I want to ask you this. Did you pause and thank God for the blessings? You know, so many times uh, in America, especially, Thanksgiving is not really about Thanksgiving. It's all about the turkey and the dressing and the pie and the ham and the whatever else that you put on the table, right? And we could go around the room and probably by the time we got through naming everything, it would be too much to even consider. Everybody has their favorite stuff at Thanksgiving. That's what it's all about. No, it's about Thanksgiving. Giving thanks to whom? To God. He's the very one that gave us breath. He's the very one that gave us the food we're about to consume. He's the very one that allowed us to be together with family if we got that opportunity. He's the very one that gave us every blessing we've ever received. And that thanksgiving is about giving thanks back to Him. The food on the table is just inconsequential. It's just something that we've done. You know, you go back and you start looking at the pilgrims and all that, I promise you, they did not have green bean casserole at the first Thanksgiving. Turkey had not been invented yet. No fried onions. There was no green bean casserole. They're all your favorite things, whatever they might be. They didn't have cranberry sauce. They might have had cranberries. It isn't about the food. It's about the giving of thanks. So did you pause this Thanksgiving season, not just that day, but during this season, did you pause and give thanks to God for the blessings? We have so much to be thankful for because as bad as things are, they could be even worse. Oh, don't say that, preacher. Don't say that. When you say things like that, it happens. Don't say it could be worse. It could be worse. It could be worse. 
Some say, I don't know how. Well, hold on. You might find out. It ain't over yet. 2020. Is anybody as excited as I am about Monday? I'm so excited for Monday. Why are you excited about Monday? It's November 30th. What is November 30th? The last day of hurricane season. And all the hurricanes know that they can't come after November 30th, right? They've come before after November 30th. We don't know what is going to happen. It could be worse. We had hurricanes before it even started this year. Before hurricane season officially started, we had hurricanes. All season long, we've had them. All of the weather, all the time. Guess what? There are people in parts of the country right now that are under winter storm warnings. So the hurricane's gone, now they're getting winter storms. Did you know that in Mobile, Alabama, we're under a freeze watch? A freeze watch. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love that cold weather. Things could get worse. We don't have any idea what's going on, but as bad as things are, they could be worse. We are blessed, people. We're blessed every day. Understand that. Listen, I don't know how things could get worse. Well, I'll tell you what. What I need to do is, after the service, we need to go out here to the airport, and I need to get you a ticket, and I need to send you over to Zimbabwe and put you out in a hut in the middle of Africa and just let you stay there for a while and, and enjoy your vacation. Wow, it just got worse. We watched a movie the other night. A guy was supposed to be going to Spain for a vacation. He ended up in Africa. They thought he was a doctor, and they put him on a mission trip. And he shows up in the middle of a village that had nothing. Totally different, and he was very wealthy. Totally different than what he had ever experienced in his life. It could be worse. You could be living in a place where they say, you cannot worship God. It's against the law. And if we find out that you are reading a Bible or worshiping God, we're going to execute you. You can't gather together with believers and have service because that's illegal. And we're going to take anything that might cause you to think about this God. There are people that are huddling around what little light that they can get in the darkness because they're hiding from the, the ones that will be chasing them down. And each person pulls out one page of a Bible that they were managed to tear out before they took their Bibles away. Or that one page that somebody smuggled into them that they could find. And it's the only page they've had for a long time. And they're reading it over and over and they're holding on to every single word because it's the Word of God and it's all that they have. In the United States of America, we can have as many Bibles as we want to. We can have Bibles in every room. Listen, for most of us, we got Bibles on our cell phone. We got Bibles on our tablet, our computer. We got Bibles everywhere. And we can read the whole thing, and then yet many do not even read it. No matter how bad it is this year, in 2020, where we're at right now, it could be worse. It could be a whole lot worse. Count your blessings. Be thankful. And looking around and surveying what we have to be thankful for. We begin to seek Him and trust Him. You realize that? When you start thinking about this message today, and you start thinking about, I want to just sit down in my life and write out all the things I'm thankful for. Try that. Sit down and start writing out everything you're thankful for. Everything. If you're thankful for that game system that you've got at home, write that down. If you're thankful for the latest cell phone that you just purchased, write that down. If you're thankful for food in the refrigerator and the pantry, write that down. Whatever it is, write down all the things that you're thankful for. Start writing them all down. And pretty soon all of those things earthly things will begin to fade and suddenly what will happen is you'll begin to seek God. You'll begin to seek the very one that gave you the things that you're thankful for. You'll begin to seek the one that gave you breath, that gave you life, that gave you a time for your eyes to be open 
you begin to seek that person, and that person is God. We begin to seek Him, and when we seek Him, what happens? We trust Him. If we're truly thankful and we start looking at all the things we're thankful for, it naturally draws us back to the one that gave us those things in the first place. It causes us to seek the one that gave us our very life. And when we seek him, we can trust him. Look at verses 31 through 33. 31 through 33. And it says this. It says... Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all of these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. All these things will be added to you. Now, I want you to think about that. If we seek Him first, and if we seek Him first, then we begin to trust Him. And if we begin to trust Him, then it helps us not to worry, but seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And when we seek Him first, meaning this becomes the greatest priority in our life, then it says all these things will be added unto you. seek him first first don't seek all the food you can put in your freezer don't seek all the clothes that you can wear don't seek all of the entertainment that you desire don't seek all those things but seek him first and when you seek him first it says all these things will be added to you well then the question is what things What you eat, what you drink, what you wear, all of life's needs will be taken care of. They'll all be taken care of if you seek Him first. I don't know how. I don't know what He will do to provide all those things for you. God's ways are not my ways. I don't know how He will do that, but I know that He will. All of life's needs will be taken care of. Don't worry, be thankful, and seek God first. That's what we have to do every single day. Well, you know, I've done that before in the past. Good. What's stopping you from doing it today? The problem is that the things that we do with God, by seeking Him first, thanking Him for our blessings, all of those things that we do, it needs to be done on a daily basis daily well that's you know that's just hard when you got to do it every single day you got to do it every day well you know what i brushed my teeth last week is it still good today no and if i didn't brush them between last week and today you would want me out that door somewhere it's not good any longer i put on clothes yesterday but you didn't want me to show up today without them did you All these things that we do every single day, part of what we need to do, the very first thing we need to do every day is seek God first. Seek Him first. When we seek Him first, then it helps us not to worry and be thankful. If we seek Him first. Look with me to verse 34. It's the last verse of this passage that I want us to see. And this is very, very important in life Today, I want us to think about this. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Every day has trouble. It shows us, this passage shows us, that worrying isn't productive. It's not productive. It's too much going on every day. Every day has enough trouble of its own. We don't need to be worried about tomorrow. We don't need to be worried about these things. We don't need to worry. We need to be thankful. Seek God first. When we do that, He will provide everything that we need. There's only one way for us to deal 
with all of this in life, and that is to trust God. So there's a question that I have for you today. Do you know the only one that can take care of you? Do you know the only one that can take care of you? Listen, it's easy to say, don't worry, trust God. It's hard to not worry. But if we trust God and we seek Him first, then that worry can dissolve away. But the problem is, if you don't know God, if you've never given your life to Him, maybe you've been attending church for years, but you don't really know Him. You've never given your life to Him. Maybe you've been a member of a Sunday school class, but you don't know Him. You've never given your life to Him. Maybe your, mom, I mean, your dad or your grandpa was a preacher, but you don't know Him. You've never given your life to Him. If that's the case, then listen, you're going to be filled with worry because you don't know the one that provides for the needs. So if you don't know him today, then you need to know him today. How can you do that? Well, in just a moment, we'll have a time of invitation. I want you to come up and talk to me. I'll share with you how you can come to know him today. Today, you don't have to wait. You don't have to go on the waiting list. Listen, you don't have to uh, pre-purchase and, and wait for it to be uh, fielded later on like the, the newest uh, iPhone. You know, you get to know God today if you simply come and I will introduce you to Him today. The rest of your life can begin today. What an amazing thing. If you already know Him, but you know what? You struggle a lot with worry. You struggle with worry in your life. There's just so many things and I worry about it. I worry that I'm worried. All of those things that happen, listen, God said, don't worry that he will provide for everything you need. So I want to encourage you today, if you struggle with that, give it to God. Be thankful. Count your blessings. Start thinking about all the things that you're thankful for and watch that worry begin to disappear. It'll simply just disappear because you know that you can trust him. Today, if you're out on Facebook and you're watching today, I want to encourage you. You can't come down the aisle and see me today, but you can send me a message and I would love to share with you how you can meet Jesus. You can call the office at 414-9700 and set up a meeting. Those of you who are here today, listen, if you know him already, I encourage you, share with those who don't how they can. How they can. That's the greatest need that we have in our country today. It's not the presidential needs, it's not the Senate, it's not the House, it's not the financial means, it's not any of that. The greatest need that we have today is for people to know the Lord. What an amazing change it would make in our world today if we spent more time sharing the gospel than complaining about the government. If we spent more time sharing the gospel than trying to be divisive in our world. How incredible would it be if we were all unified under one God? One God, the God. Today I want to ask you to be in prayer. Be in prayer for our nation, be in prayer for our church, be in prayer for all of us. But most importantly, I want you to be in prayer for yourself. God revealed to me today the things that I need to work on in my life. And if the fact is that I don't really know you, I've never had a real relationship, then I ask you to reveal that to me today that I know 100% that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. That's what I want you to be praying about today. Right now we're going uh, to pray, and then we'll have a time of invitation, and you respond as God leads you. Let's pray. Father, we do come to you today, and I do pray that, God, if there's one person here that maybe they don't even realize that they don't know you because they've grown up in church, they've been in Sunday school, they've been around godly parents, they've all of those things. And so, Father, they kind of uh, speak the language, but yet they've never had a moment in their life when they realized that they were lost in need of a Savior, that they were a sinner in need of a Savior. They've never given their life to you. Father, I pray today that you would reveal that to them, that they would know 100% they need you today. God, whether they're here, whether they're out watching on, on, online, Father, I pray that you would just touch lives today. Father, be with all of us. We all struggle with worry. Father, help us to give it to you. Help us to just be thankful 
and count our blessings and, Father, name all of those things off and write them down and realize that, God, you will take care of us. We mean more to you than the birds and the flowers because we were created in your own image. And we know that you'll take care of us. Today, God, help us each and every day to live our lives worthy of you, to live our lives in a way that we share the gospel with those who don't know, to live our lives in a way, Father, that others would see Jesus in us. Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of our incredible Savior, Jesus. Amen. Won't you stand? And if you need to do business with the Lord today, the altar.